Welcome to the Walkthrough Wednesday World Tour. Thank you guys so much for joining us in the Walkthrough Wednesday studio. We are so excited to be welcoming Mark to the stage today. Come on out, Mark. We've got Merck here as my co-host today. Woo! Welcome. And we're gonna be visiting Mark's Ski Resort. Thank you so much for having me here today. And sometimes when people see me for the first time in Horizon, they say, there's Mark Zuckerberg. And as soon as I speak, uh, about three seconds later, they know, nah, it's not him. But <laughs> anyway, I'm thrilled to be here. Tell us a little bit about when did you get into VR? Well, you know, several years back, I got a device called an Oculus Go. And it was a 3DOF headset that didn't need a gaming computer or anything to use. And I thought, wow, this thing is fantastic. I just fell in love with it and enjoyed every minute of it. And when the Quest 1 came out, I said, I've got to have that and go to the next oh, yeah. level. I signed up for the Horizon test group programming experience you have experience it was no no none none no no none none so when i got invited back in august 2020 and i thought well they must have made a mistake because i don't know anything about this and so i happily came into the plaza and started meeting people and i didn't know if i wanted to create anything or not it really didn't have any idea of how to start or what to do the thing that struck me about horizon was the people here i made Made dozens of friends in a very short period of time and those same friends are still friends today in VR and I found out that the community was so great that just because I didn't know how to do anything or didn't have any experience didn't mean that I couldn't make a world because if I tried to do something and ran into a, a block or something I didn't know I had a dozen friends that would say oh I can show you how to do this you want to make a door open and close I know how to do that so I just picked up little bits and pieces as I went before I knew it I was making my own world like I told Merck the first night that we met <laughs> uh, in one of my worlds I said listen I said I'm the poster boy for somebody that came off the street and didn't have any experience didn't know anything and if i can do it anybody can if you can imagine something you want to make in here you can make some form of it in vr it may not be exactly what you yeah. think of it first but you can make some form of anything you can imagine in here and it's wonderful it's addictive and it's very satisfying i love that i have that same same attitude in fact Merck had something really interesting to say about the time that he met you yeah it was actually i mean the first time i met mark i just literally hopped on to Horizon and go into the popular list and there's Mark's World and it's got a big picture of his face for the picture of it. And then I'm like, I'm going to check this out. It looks fun. So I go hop in there and lo and behold, I meet this guy standing there in his own world, which I thought was cool. I was like, you yeah. made this? Like, I'm actually meeting the guy that made this? Wow. And like, not only that, but the whole experience was like very humbling where like Mark took like a half an hour or whatever of his own time just to show me the things that were possible. And like, and that's what I remember him saying that. And he still says it like, if I can do this, you can too. And then I remember like right after that, I like hopped in and started my own thing and just start, awesome. went from there and had such inspiration. Yeah. I too remember the first time I met Mark, as it would turn out, I was exploring his world, had never built before, and he was like, I built this. And I was just like, you did? What? How could? That's incredible. Like, the idea that you could build in here is like, it blew my mind. And it was a progression that led me to become a creator myself. And just your, your energy, your personality, it's talk, intoxicating in a good way. Thank you so much. You're very kind, and you are too, Merck. And, you know, one reason I hang out in my own worlds often is because I love to see how other people interact with the things that I try to put in my world. That's really the only way as a creator that one can understand how people enjoy their worlds and what they notice and what activities they like. I was talking to another creator and he was making a world and I said, you know, you really should walk through your world as a visitor. He says, well, you can't do that when you're the creator. And I said, oh yes, you can. I said, <laughs> it's like a director who's making a movie. He has to be able to see through the, the eye of the camera lens what his audience is going to see and he has to be able to make sure that what he puts on film is the experience and the emotions and the things that he wants the audience to to experience and feel when they see his movie so if you're a good director that's what you do and if you're a good good world creator i think that's one of the things that that we should do and i found out that some of the things that i think oh people are just going to get blown away by this they're going to love this i go into the world and watch they don't <laughs> even notice it 
Oh. And, and then there's some other little thing that I make and people just fixate on it and they go crazy over it. My first little world has a, a dance room, um, restaurant, yeah. disco room with a <laughs> with a jukebox in it where you can play music. And it has a big disco ball that rotates, uh, comes out of the ceiling. It's a really high ceiling. So I went in there and watched people and they were all trying to jump on top of the disco ball, which it never <laughs> occurred to me that anyone would want to do that. So I said, well, if that's what people want, I'm going to put diving boards on the balconies and give them low gravity and let them jump on the ball and spin around. <laughs> and I think people go to that world just to jump on top of that ball and it. spin around in, in the middle of the music. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun, but it's one of those things that I didn't think of it. The visitors thought of it. So, yeah. you know, I think it's always good to be receptive to what people want. What great advice. Seriously, you know, we heard from Habiter about a month ago. He was talking about how he creates escape rooms. And then similarly, you know, in an escape room, you need to know how the visitors react. But, you know, it directly applies to every world we we ever create. Like we just, you know, we released several worlds recently and going in and play testing it with people we've never met before really helps us develop it. And it comes right through. I didn't realize you put the diving boards in afterward. When I went there, I was like, diving boards, let's go. And that was just so much fun. I never mm. would have thought to do that because I'm not the person who jumps on, um, on balls that I can't reach. But, I, you know, I did. And I, I was like, this is so much fun. Well, thank you. You know, it, it's a sword that cuts both ways, too. I Like the ski resort world, when I made that, I had no idea that there would be a lot of visitors who went in there not to ski, but to go mountain climbing, oh. which it wasn't <laughs> intended for that. So I had to really make sure I patched up all the little places where people could climb up into the scenery and yeah. jump off the edge of the world or try to. <laughs> I didn't know people want to do that, but they did. And that's okay because the worlds are made for people to explore and have a good time in them. I'm more of a builder. I know a lot of you that are building in Horizon. There's kind of two groups of, of creators in here. It just happens that way. There are people who are heavily weighted on the scripting side and they're really smart and they have that logical brain that process how they see how to get from A to B to C to D with all these paths and with logic in their scripts. And they're the artists and builders who do such a wonderful job of using these 15 primitive objects to make amazing things like this auditorium that we're in now. And then there's people who do a little bit of both. It's just a great community. Everybody works together. And everybody that I've met in here, I see uh, Ubiquitous out here. He's shared a lot of neat things with me. Everybody in here, if they learn how to do something, if they make a breakthrough with a script or whatever, they are willing to share it. They're like, well, here, I found out how to do something. If you need to use it in your world, here it is. I made a little bow and arrow for the Roman world, and it's been imported into about five or six other worlds as just a starter bow and arrow for yeah. other people to use. And people have improved on it and done different things with it, Don't you uh, animations that? and all, to make it even better. I tell you, I love it. Yeah, as I a scripter, creating scripts and then watching the community take them, augment them, and just do things I never would have expected. I, it's the same thing with building. You just never would have expected what you see happen. And it's amazing. I love sharing with the community for that reason alone. Props to you for sharing. Seriously, anyone else out there who wants to share, please do. You will you'll thank yourself later for sure. Question I had for you is your naming structure. It was the first thing I noticed when I joined Horizon. I, I don't know that I saw anyone else doing it back then. Well, maybe there was a couple. There was, you know, Ubi's got it and a few others are using it. Where, But all of your worlds are Mark's Ski Resort, Mark's Roman World. And it's fun. It's great. We got your face yeah. on there. But how did that get started? What, what inspired you to do that? It was really just so I could find my worlds easier because <laughs> I couldn't remember the names of all these worlds, you know, because people had all these weird names for worlds. And if you couldn't remember how to spell the name of a world, you might not be able to find it again. I had that happen a lot of times. I would take somebody to someone else's world. And then two days later, I'd want to take another person there. Yeah. And I couldn't remember the name of the thing. And you, you can't search for it if you don't remember it. So I just said to myself, I'm going to name my worlds <laughs> Mark and then whatever it is. That way I can find it when I'm looking for it. And maybe other people can find it easier too. So yeah. then it became kind of a brand. So I use it for everything. I think uh, you're a trendsetter, so Mark. Basically all Everyone's it doing it now. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. It's great. Congratulations on like starting a trend. Because it's true. I mean, we really need to be able to find these worlds and 
you as a creator have your brand. It's Mark's Ski Resort. You know, if anyone else comes in here, even Mark Zuckerberg can't outdo you. You started the brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. It just makes it easier. Hey, so first of all, Mark, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you being here and sharing all that great information with, you know, everybody here and future when we uh, share this on YouTube. But the question that I have for you, you do have your own brand. You have a number of worlds that are just incredible. Why of all the worlds that you've done, I haven't seen a hub world from you. And what are you doing in place of a hub world to get all of your worlds seen? And then a third part, if you'll uh, humor me, what do you think would be the most beneficial that Horizon could do to help people find your worlds? No, I don't have a hub world at the current time, and I'm thinking about making one, and the purpose of the hub world for me would be to put it in other people's worlds, and then I would let them put their hub world doorway into my world. Because if I make a hub world, it'll be like any other world that we make in here. It'll show up on the what's new list for about a week if we're lucky, and then it'll be buried under hundreds of other worlds on the popular list, and nobody will be able to find it either. So if people can't find your hub world, they can't find your other worlds, so it's not a priority for me to make a hub world because I don't know that it would be helpful if, if people couldn't find the hub world on the list. Well, the best thing that can happen is if you get featured in the plaza. That is a big boost for anybody. And I've only had two worlds featured in the plaza. I had a world featured in uh, back in September, October uh, with my first world. And then this week, the, uh, the Mark and Jeff. Congratulations. Thank you. But that, you know, really boosts the traffic and lets people know about your world. Other than that, I think the best strategy is, is what I'm using now. I make a collaborator room in every world. I've gone back to my older worlds and made collaborator rooms and they reciprocate and let me put doors to my worlds and all of their worlds. That way when someone's visiting someone else's popular world it's, then maybe they'll see my doorway in there and just maybe they'll think well that might be something interesting that I want to check out. If you're building a hub world it's got to be interesting. There's got to be something more to it than just a series of doors. <laughs> And we have the same thing going on in our tours hub. It's a great place. We've done a little bit to make it interactive, but the more you can do to keep people hanging out there, the more it's gonna be able to stay, you know, at the top of the populace, keep people hanging out, finding worlds, coming back to find new worlds. And so I just would encourage you, if you're gonna make a hub world, add a little bit more to it, because what is the point of going to it? In fact, one thing I love about your worlds is all your doors are there. What would be like a good first world to create? Good question. Well, it depends on on what your interests are, what kinds of things you like, and what you know about building in here. Unless you have scripting skills and some things that you're going to need to make a player versus player game, I would suggest maybe an exploration world or a hangout or an adventure world first, where you could just build things that you like and that you think would be fun to do yourself, and then open that up for people to go in and explore and interact with those things. My first world was a sandbox world it's called Mark's world and it was just me trying to learn how to, to make trees and different you know objects and things and then do some basic scripting and asking people to come help me with the scripts and everybody was nice to do so but I learned a lot and that world was the first world that was featured in the plaza that was not made by a Horizon uh, team. I wasn't even going to publish the thing because <laughs> I thought, well, it doesn't go together. You know, nothing in there matches. It has no central theme, nothing to hold it together. But everybody said, go ahead and publish it. It'll be fun. And it turned out to be really popular. So I would suggest just build what you like. And then as you learn more, then you can always make more complicated worlds. And for all I know, you might be a genius. You might, you know, you may be a great script brand builder and you might make be able to make something out of this world right off bat. Uh, thank you. Hey, Mark, are you going to make any puzzle games? Uh, that's a good question, and I don't have any immediate plans for a puzzle game. Puzzles are not my forte. Um, in fact, if I ever go into one of Waffle Copter's worlds, I make sure to take four or five really smart people in there with me <laughs> because I never get out. I might get out, but it might be two or three hours later if I don't take <laughs> some help in there. Oh, I could probably name 
several things uh, that I struggled with. The ski resort world was a difficult world to make, and it's my most popular world, and I think it's in some ways aesthetically it's the prettiest world. And I was lucky enough to have one of the best scripters in here to help me, and that was Spastic Plastic. And he said, I want to script the chairlift, and I want to make skis and snowboards because I wanted to make a world where you had working chairlifts and skis and snowboards. And we both worked really hard on it, and Spastic worked really hard on the skis and the physics of trying to make a, a ski or a snowboard that would power you down the mountain uh, and would accelerate with an incline as the incline got steeper that it, it would accelerate more. And we found out with the physics that were currently available in Horizon that that was not possible, but it took about four or five weeks of working and experimenting with different ideas to finally realize that we couldn't do it that way. There's one thing in here in Horizon, if you can't do something the way you want to do it, you usually can find a workaround and something will occur to you that you can do to work around it. You know, we were able to make wearables and then lo and behold, Horizon gave us the ability to change the avatar's speed. And then they gave us the ability to change the avatar speed without having to respawn them. So when that opened up, then I was able to make ski poles so that people could push the A and B buttons to speed up or slow down and they could go fast or slow and they could wear the skis and snowboards but these are just wearables they don't really have any effect but yeah I've gotten stuck on scripts before uh, and on loops and on event and all the things that I had to learn but whatever I get stuck on I just keep working at it and then I'll do as much of it on my own as I can and if I get to the point to where I just can't get past something I'll ask somebody who's smarter than me at scripting to look at it and say, well, what, what am I missing here? Where have I gone wrong? You know, what's the problem? And usually somebody will come to my rescue and say, well, you got all this right and it looks good, except it's one little thing here, you know, and are these two little things and then you fix that and all is good, all is well. But yeah, you're going to get things that frustrate you. There's no doubt about that. If something's not going to go where you want it to go, something's not going to play, some song's not going to play, some animation's not going to go when you want it to, and you just, or everything's not going to work it hooked into your script and you just have to have patience and just keep working on it. I really admire some of the creators in here who don't even publish the world until it's about 98% complete even though, you know, they could publish it sooner but they want everything to be really, really perfect uh, like Ruben or Sandwich, you know, it's got some very popular worlds now but you wouldn't believe the amount of hours he spends fine-tuning everything that he makes in those worlds to make sure that they work as perfectly as possible before he publishes it. And it really pays off. So I think having patience is good. And just don't let things discourage you if you get stuck. I, I mean, I... I've probably been stuck more times than I can, you know, list, but there's always a workaround. Great answer, yeah. Mark. Thank you so much. And great question, Darkness. Thank I you. would just add to that and let you know that if you're a scripter or maybe even in the building sector, if you're having trouble and it's three in the morning, go to bed. I, I find almost all of my issues at three in the morning <laughs> happen to be I put in the wrong like variable or I did something backwards. And then the next morning I wake up and in five minutes it's solved. So if, if you're working on something for too long, that could also be the issue. Just a Quick tip. <laughs> yeah. If you're stuck on something or you need help with anything, don't be shy to post onto the page because there's so many people out there that are willing to even just help people. Because like, I'll be honest, there's people that are out there that will help you. Like um, Merck, everyone yeah. in this audience that are absolutely willing to help, myself included. We all want to, you know, help everyone in this community grow because it improves everyone's experience. Yeah, I think that's where it starts. And also, if you're stuck with something, like, go be social, go look at other worlds. That's one awesome thing that like I was like go look at other people's ideas and like take your own spin on it and then even like show them be like hey look look what I did with this thing and then they'll be like oh that's cool and like they can take your ideas and and it's just a growing everything that we're doing in here should be to help each other grow so that horizon grows like like that's what we're all doing here right like <laughs> before everybody gets in we want to make it a good experience so I mean the more that we share and the more that we collab I absolutely love collab collaborating way more fun to go to a space that's created by a group and everybody in there is wanting to bring their own people there to show what they've done within the space and it's just a much more interactive spot and may i add something to that mark hit on something it's really really important in here to emphasize the social experience that we have here because the biggest asset in horizon are the users and the people here that are playing in horizon that's a bigger asset than all the scripting tools and all the technology and all the 
the the brains and all behind it. It's the people here and relationships we make with one another. The first few days I was in here, like I, I'm repeating myself, but I'm, I made so many good friends and I still have those friends today. And be social and meet people and meet people that are building and creating and scripting and hang around with them and go world hopping with them and visit places with them. And then if people want to collaborate with you, if you invite them and they accept and they do something great in your world and and make something for you and you use it in there, give them a shout out, you know, um, now, like every every uh, slope in that ski resort is named after somebody who helped me do something in that world because I wanted to do more than just have that person on the collaborator list because good that they show up on the collaborator list, but how many people look at all the collaborators when they're looking at the info on a world? So put something in the world if you can to give a shout out to that person. It can be something subtle or it can be something that hits you right in the face, you know, with whatever you want to do, give them a little shout out when you can, and maybe they'll do the same for you too. We've actually come to the end of our time. Thank you so much for joining us. He is such a wonderful creator, and we're so honored to have him. Bye!